November 19th, 1994, the NWA held a tournament in Cherry Hill, New Jersey to crown a new National Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight Champion. The Suicide Blonde, Chris Candido, defeated Simply Sensational Al Snow, the Dirty White Boy, and Tracy Smothers in the finals to win the tournament and become the new NWA World Champion. With manager Tammy Fitch at his side, Candido would face an extremely tough challenge of keeping the world title. Among his first challengers was dangerous Devin Storm, who faced Candido here in December of 94 in Forked River, New Jersey. However, Devin Storm did not have enough to defeat the Suicide Blonde and take the title. Candido took the belt, Tammy, and promoter Dennis Coraluzzo down to his home territory, Smoky Mountain Wrestling in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it would be there that Candido would ultimately lose the title when he faced the challenge of ultimate fighting superstar, Dan the Beast Severn. February 24th, 1995, at the Peels Palace in Erlinger, Kentucky, an unprepared Chris Candido submitted to Dan Severn, and we had a new NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Severn faced all comers, including the Iron Man, Tommy Cairo, and Al Snow here at the first Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. But tonight, Dan Severn puts his NWA World Championship on the line against former champion Dory Funk Jr. Plus, Former Smoky Mountain Wrestling heavyweight champion, The Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, with Jim Cornette in his corner, will take on Dangerous Doug Gilbert. The NWA North American Championship hangs in the balance as the champion, the reckless youth, defends the title against both Lance Diamond and the Cheetah Master in a triangle match. The Downward Spiral will defend the United States Tag Team titles. Ian Rotten will face Tommy Gilbert. High-flying sensation of the NWA, Ace Darling, will take on the challenge of World Wrestling Federation superstar, Flash Funk. And in the main event, Psycho Derek Domino, with Angel at his side, will take on Gold Dust. All this, plus much more here tonight at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NWA Home Video. My name is Dave Prezak, and I will be doing the play-by-play -play for you, joined by a host of color commentators this evening at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl here in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. In the main event, Dan the Beast Severn defends the NWA world title against Dory Funk Jr., former champion. Also, Goldust faces psycho Derek Domino, Flash Funk against Ace Darling, Three-way dance for the North American Heavyweight Championship as Cheetah Master, Lance Diamond, and the Reckless Youth, the champion, square off. The man left standing at the end of the match becomes North American title holder. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the action.
back here at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. We are at Cherry Hill West High School in Cherry Hill, New Jersey for this very special evening. In the ring right now, referee Fred Richards and ring announcer Chad Gerber and making their way to the ring. The Beach Bombs, consisting of the Inferno Kid and Surfer Ray Odyssey. Newly formed tag team in the NWA, Inferno and Odyssey. Debuted as a team for the NWA in March of 1997 in Yardville, New Jersey. They're gonna be challenged. <laughs> and Ray Odyssey slips a little bit. I wonder if he's uh I wonder if he's sober. No, nah, he's been drinking a little bit. United States Tag Team Championship belts currently held by these men. The Downward Spiral. Twiggy Ramirez and Exotic Adrian Hall. And they are accompanied by their manager, Madonna Wayne Gacy. Big Maryland Manson fans, I guess. Swinging the belt there, Adrian Hall to your left. <laughs> Newly crowned tag team champions. They won the belts in a triangle match in Yardville, New Jersey on the 22nd of March at Imagine Nations uh, facing Inferno and Ray Odyssey as well as Derek Domino and Harley Lewis, the Misfits. And how they came out the uh, winners of that match is beyond me, but they're the champions. Let's see how they fare against Inferno and Odyssey. It seems like it seems like the fans are behind Ray Odyssey and the Inferno Kid tonight as Adrian Hall molests Fred Richards there. That was just highly inappropriate. to get action underway here with our opening match at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. One fall to a finish and the belts are on the line. That's Inferno Kid and Adrian Hall in the ring right now. Madonna Wayne Gacy on the floor. And Adrian Hall kisses the Inferno Kid and smacks him. 
I wouldn't do that. And he gets a slap back. And atomic drops for both members of the downward spiral. And uh, they shouldn't play around with the Inferno Kid. Even though uh, Adrian Hall would like him to play with him, uh, I wouldn't advise that. As Ray Odyssey makes his way into the ring. Collar and elbow tie up into the corner goes Ray Odyssey. Kicks to the midsection. Fred Richards right in there. Irish whip. Odyssey into the corner. Comes out with a clothesline and down goes Adrian Hall. Open hand slaps to the chest of Adrian Hall. And the fans are clearly behind Ray Odyssey. Fred Richards questioning his tactics. Face first into the turnbuckle goes Adrian Hall. Tag into the Inferno Kid. Double team maneuver, double elbow. Cover. But only a two count. Hall planted into the mat. Leg drop across the neck. And into the turnbuckle once again. The downward spiral two-time NWA United States Tag Champs. As Hall hip toss out of the corner. In comes Twiggy Ramirez. Gets more of the same. Big body slam on Adrian Hall. Their first title win was from the Lost Boys. Won the belts in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Oh, and Ray Odyssey takes out all members of the downward spiral on the floor. And the crowd's loving it. That was for our first title win in Paulsboro, New Jersey at Hill Theater back in November of 96. They lost the titles shortly thereafter in Mount Holly, New Jersey on the 7th of December to the Lost Boys. And now they're the champions once again. And uh, how do you like that, Twiggy? I, I think he would like that. Why is he, why is he complaining? Odyssey, what's the noise in the corner, clothesline. And down he goes. Tag into the Inferno Kid. Big double elbow drop. Inferno and Odyssey now hailing from Surf City. The Inferno Kid originally from New York City. Turned to the Lower East Side Wrestling Gym in New York. Flying elbow. Knocks down Ramirez in a cover. But only a two count. Reversal. Oh, and into the knee of Adrian Hall on the ring apron. And now the side of the match turns into the favor of the downward spiral. Ramirez makes the tag. And in comes Adrian Hall once again. Several kicks to the head of the Inferno Kid. Later tonight, Goldust will be taking on Derek Domino, one half of the Misfits in the main event. As well, Dan Severn defends the world title against Dory Funk Jr. We'll have a triangle match for the North American title. Down goes Inferno Kid once again. Lance Diamond and the Cheetah Master both challenge Reckless Youth for the North American title in that triangle match. Plus, Ian Rotten will face Tommy Gilbert, King Kong Bundy, and Dirty Don Montoya will square off. 
Russian leg sweep by both members of the downward spiral on the Inferno Kid. He's in a world of hurt now. But only a two count. Also in the building, Mr. Puerto Rico, Steve Carino, former rocker Marty Janetti, Harley Lewis, Jimmy Cicero. We have a battle royal. And a whole lot more here tonight in Cherry Hill. As the crowd getting behind Inferno and Ray Odyssey, he makes the tag, in comes Odyssey, but referee Fred Richards had his back turned to the action, distracted by Adrian Hall on the apron. It doesn't look like he's gonna allow the tag. He didn't see it. And as they argue, the downward spiral double teaming the Inferno kid in the center of the ring. Big suplex. cover. Only a one count. And it looks like he might be choking him there. Richards needs to get in there. And he does. Warning him about the choke. Adrian Hall, veteran of the Northeast Independent scene for the past several years. Ditto Ray Odyssey and the Inferno Kid. More kicks to the head of the Inferno Kid as Piggy Ramirez in the ring drops his entire body across the lower back of Inferno. Ray Odyssey rallying the fans on. Inferno Kid needs to make the tag if they want any chance of winning the tag team titles here tonight in Cherry Hill. Ramirez still with the upper hand in the match, body slam, and a tag into Hall once again. Whip into the ropes, flying leg lariat connects with the Inferno Kid. into the corner, and an elbow right below the face of the Inferno Kid, right in the throat area. Tag into Twiggy Ramirez. Second turnbuckle on the inside, pushes him off. There's Adrian Hall to the top rope. Twiggy Ramirez comes off, leg drop, nobody home. And this is Inferno's golden opportunity to make it to his corner and tag in Surfer Ray Odyssey. Will he be able to do it? Twiggy tags in Adrian Hall, and Furno makes the tag. Fred Richards sees it this time, and Circle Ray Odyssey going to work on both members of the downward spiral. Adrian Hall into the rough fake clothesline. Ramirez as well, and he gets more of the same. Turned inside out is Twiggy Ramirez, and Ray Odyssey looks like he's gonna climb to the top rope. Taking a little bit too much time there. Comes off, big drop kick, connects with Twiggy. And Madonna Wayne Gacy on the ring apron gets knocked down to the floor, but from behind, Adrian Hall. And he pushes Odyssey to the floor, Inferno Kid back in, toe to toe with Twiggy Ramirez. Twiggy places the Inferno Kid on the top rope. Possibly going for a superplex here. He's gonna try it, but Ray Odyssey Holding on to the Inferno Kid, and Twiggy goes flying. The Kid to the top rope. Twiggy spins around, hit, gets another drop kick in the face. This one from the Inferno Kid for the three count, and we have new United States Tag Team Champions here in the NWA. The Beach Boys, Inferno Kid and Ray Odyssey defeat Twiggy Ramirez and Adrian Hall to win the United States Tag Team titles here at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. And it looks like Twiggy's not too happy with Madonna Wayne Gacy. What, who are these guys? Out of nowhere. 
That, that's the Brothers East LA. They haven't even been competing in the NWA for the past several months. What are they doing here? Going to work on the Beach Bullies. Inferno Kid tossed out to the floor. The Brothers East LA. They're not even in the NWA. Into the ring post goes the Inferno Kid. Ring the bell. Promoter Dennis Coraluzzo at ringside looking on. This is not going to uh, sit well with the NWA Board of Directors. Coraluzzo doesn't know what's going on. What's this? They're asking for the mic. the uh, new champions, Inferno Kid and Ray Odyssey, and Inferno's, oh, he's going after them once again as they try to retreat to the locker room. This will no doubt lead to several grudge matches down the line at future shows here in the NWA between the Brothers East LA and the new champions, the Beach Bullies, as they take it back to the locker room here in Cherry Hill. Mike Keener, the official assigned to this contest, as they ring the bell. Fans not knowing what to make of Carino thus far. This is their first time seeing him. But they clearly are not too happy with Mr. Puerto Rico. Very cocky individual. Side headlock by Steve Carino. Pushed off, there you see the power of Mr. Puerto Rico, shoving him into the corner. Fans don't particularly care for Mr. Puerto Rico. I think that they're gonna be behind Carino tonight. Destiny better stay out of the way. If Carino's gonna have any chance of defeating Mr. Puerto Rico tonight, He's going to need everything on his side, and Destiny's interference will not help matters at all. Once again, with a side headlock on Mr. Puerto Rico, whipped into the turnbuckle, ducks the clothesline, misses the elbow, but Mr. Puerto Rico catches Carino and plants him into the mat. Yeah, how smart is he? Not following up, Carino back on his feet, drop kick to the back of Puerto Rico, knocking him to the floor, and Steve Carino outsmarting Ralph Soto. No surprise. The fans getting behind Carino here as Puerto Rico regroups on the ringside floor with Destiny. Both men back in the ring, chopped to the chest. Irish whip into the ropes. But once again, we see the power of Mr. Puerto Rico overcoming the athleticism of Steve Carino. Planted in the mat once again, taking a lot out of the back of Steve Carino.
And referee Mike Keener getting in there. That's that's a chokehold. Military presses Carino. Ralph Soto drops his neck across the top rope. And unfortunately, Steve Carino not faring too well thus far in his NWA debut. And once again, referee needs to check for the choke there. That is illegal. Kicks to the chest of Steve Carino. Referee warning him about pulling the hair. Drags him by the hair over the top rope on top of the table. He's not going to win the match with his opponent on the ringside floor. It's Mr. Puerto Rico posing for the fans to no cheers. Destiny now <laughs> feels the wrath of Steve Carino on the floor. It's like he's getting his second win here. Sunset flip into the ring. But Mr. Puerto Rico once again picks up Carino by the throat and throws him back down. That's what he gets for putting his hands on Destiny. Cover. Only a two count. I believe that's the first cover we've had so far. First pinfall attempt in this matchup. Big body slam by Mr. Puerto Rico, and uh, he says he's going to finish him off. And is he going to climb the ropes? Apparently so. Spending a little bit too much time is Ralph Soto. What's he going to do? Front flip, nobody home. Carino rolls out of the way. And he's back on his feet. Carino, right hand to the jaw of Mr. Puerto Rico, and he's got him in the corner. Puerto Rico ducks the clothesline, but Carino with a bulldog off the middle rope on Mr. Puerto Rico. Capitalizing on the mistakes of Ralph Soto here. Into the ropes, Carino with a big drop kick to the chest. And down goes Mr. Puerto Rico. Destiny very frustrated on the ringside floor. Super kick. Cross between a drop kick and a super kick there. Both feet left the mat. Carino needs to follow up on this. Tries for a full Nelson, but too powerful is Mr. Puerto Rico. Elbow to the face. And down across the back of Carino. Looks like he's setting up for either a pile driver or a power bomb. And he plants Steve Carino in the mat. Goes for the cover. End of three count. And Carino goes down to the hands of Mr. Puerto Rico here in his first appearance for the National Wrestling Alliance. Strength and power overcoming wrestling ability in this matchup. As Mr. Puerto Rico now getting in the face of one of the uh, more prominent Philadelphia area fans, Hawaiian boy, Destiny as well. Security getting in between the two, thankfully. Scorpion. A couple fans stopped me on the way into the building here tonight in Cherry Hill asking me, was it Ric Flair, the Black Scorpion? Well, we'll find out here tonight at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl.
microphone, said that the Black Scorpion just got done wrestling for New Japan Pro Wrestling at the Tokyo Dome. Wonder who that is? Could be Masa Chono, the great Muda, Shinjiro Otani, he's a phenomenal worker. Maybe it's Inoki. Nah, he wouldn't come over for, nah, he charged too much. Donnie B. Deviously. Going to take on the Black Scorpion here. He is simply a manager. Long story. Former manager of Rick Ratchet is Donnie B. He wants the mic now. be the former manager of Rick Ratchet faced Ratchet in a loser must retire match back in February of 96 or excuse me in 97 in Yardville New Jersey at Imaginations Donnie B won the match Rick Ratchet had to retire then this past month March 22nd in Yardville Rick Ratchet made the challenge to Donnie B that if, if he could defeat his black scorpion then Ratchet will stay out of the NWA, but if his Black Scorpion can defeat Donnie B, Ratchet can return. So here's the matchup, and it looks like Donnie B is taking over. As Tommy Fia, uh, Tommy Coraluzzo, excuse me, retreats on the floor, Donnie B with a chair. But from behind, here comes the Black Scorpion, and down goes Donnie B. Both Coral Luzo and the Black Scorpion going to work on him on the floor. The Scorpion throwing him back into the ring. To the top rope, the Black Scorpion goes, but Donnie B catches him. Big body slam off the top rope. And the Black Scorpion doesn't seem to be faring too well against Donnie B, who, as he said, he's only a manager. Don't be fooled by his performance. Power bomb, only a one count on the Black Scorpion. Interesting boots. Looks like a double R crossed out. Elbow, and down goes the Scorpion. It's from New Japan. Huh? Maybe it's Shiro Koshinaka. That's Sumi Fujinami. Uh, kick to the midsection. Big chop in the corner as the crowd. Uh, Ric Flair like chops. Maybe it is Ric Flair. Punches and chops having no effect on Donnie B as he whips the scorpion into the ropes. Big boot. Does he think he's Hulk Hogan now? Leg drop. Cover. Nope, he comes up after two, shaking his finger. Donnie B taking over on the Black Scorpion. <laughs> Big punch to the face of the Scorpion, and he spits in the face of Tommy Corluzzo. He deserved that. Donnie B with the Black Scorpion in the corner. Irish whip. He charges, shoulder block into the midsection of the Black Scorpion. Donnie B wearing one of the souvenir Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl t-shirts. And uh, now it's time to go to school. <laughs> and the Black Scorpion landed face first into the mat. And is Donnie B gonna take the mask off? Will we see who this mysterious black scorpion is? Throws him into the corner again. Right hands to the side of the head. 
And over the top rope out of the floor goes the Black Scorpion. Tommy Coraluzzo on the ring apron. He's going to sneak up from behind on Donnie B. <laughs> but he sees him. Ducks the clothesline. Diamond cutter. Donnie B lays out Tommy Coraluzzo. And the crowd's loving it here in Cherry Hill. Kicks him out to the floor as the Black Scorpion back up on the ring apron. Donnie B suplexes him back into the ring. Referee Fred Richards putting the count on both men. Tommy Coraluzzo hurting on the outside. Donnie B, what is he gonna, what's he gonna do here? He's got him up, airplane spin, and down goes the Black Scorpion. This match has been basically all Donnie B. And he's gonna pull the pants off of the Black Scorpion. Who will it be? And those are Rick Ratchet's tights. Is Ric Flair wearing Ratchet's tights tonight? What is, what is this, Tommy Coraluzzo got something out of his shoe and handed it to the Scorpion. And now he's completely lost his top. This is, that is Rick Ratchet, he lifted up the mask. He's, he's loading his mask. <laughs> but it fell out of his mask. Referee distracted by Donnie B. What? The mask is loaded once again. Headbutt to the forehead of Donnie B. Referee Fred Richards turns around elbow. And a three count. What a travesty of justice here as the Black Scorpion pins Donnie B. Does this mean that Rick Ratchet can return to the NWA? Ah, oh, this is horrible. Referee Fred Richards did not see him load the mask and deliver the headbutt to Donnie B. And now both Ratchet strutting across the ring and Coraluzzo putting the boots to Donnie B. This just isn't right. Rick Ratchet now permitted to return to the NWA with a pinfall victory over Donnie B. Deviously and very happy of the Black Scorpion, Rick Ratchet, lifting the mask up once again to go back to the locker room. with his barbed wire baseball bat in hand. Popping into the ring, wearing an IWA t-shirt. That's his promotion down in Louisville. Let's go back up to ring announcer Chad Gerber. Tommy Gilbert makes his way to the ring, led by Kid Vicious. Last year, Tommy Gilbert squared off against Dory Funk Jr. at the first tribute card in memory of Eddie Gilbert. 
They wrestled to a 20-minute time limit draw. Excellent match. Got a standing ovation from the crowd on hand at the National Guard Armory in Cherry Hill. Tonight takes on a wrestler with a little bit different style than Dory Funk Jr. in Ian Rotten. Mike Keener, the official assigned to this contest. High five from Kid Vicious. That barbed wire baseball bat sitting in the corner is uh, worrying me a little bit. You better not introduce that to Tommy Gilbert's body. You know, what a way to pay tribute to Eddie, having his father get cut up on barbed wire. But hopefully we won't see any of that in this matchup. Ian Rotten, as much as he is known for the violent matches that he's been a part of the past several years, he can wrestle, and hopefully we will see that here tonight. We have a handshake to start things off. Show of sportsmanship. And a collar and elbow tie-up. Tommy Gilbert on drags Ian Rotten. I think he's a little bit surprised at Tommy Gilbert's skill. Big age difference in this match as well. This time Ian grabs the arm of Tommy Gilbert, pushes him into the ropes. McKean are gonna make them break the hole. Opposite corners once again. Ian Rotten had a legendary blood fest at the NWA's Four Corners of Pain card this past summer, June 15th to be exact, at the Walt Whitman truck stop in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he wrestled Madman Pondo in a death match. The ring was surrounded by all sorts of gruesome items. One, one side of the ring had a pit of thumbtacks, one broken glass, thumbtacks on another side of the ring, and barbed wire on the other. Vicious, vicious match. Ian Rotten came out the victor there. And he's done similar matches down near his hometown of Louisville in Indiana, as well up in Michigan for Insane Championship Wrestling. But tonight, it doesn't look like he's going to be very violent with Tommy Gilbert thus far a pro wrestling match. Side headlock now by Tommy Gilbert on Ian Rotten. Turns it into a hammerlock, but Ian into the ropes, and Mike Keener is going to make him break the hold. Ian Rotten proving many critics wrong who said that he couldn't wrestle, that he was just into the gore and violence of professional wrestling. Taking it to Tommy Gilbert here. Gilbert now barring the arm of Ian Rotten. Ian makes it to the ropes, and once again, Gilbert's going to have to break the hole. As the two get a round of applause from some of the ringside fans, we're actually wrestling here tonight. Gilbert now with the arm of Ian Rotten once again. Arm ringer. But Ian picks him up and plants him in the rat with a big body slam. Mike Keener once again getting between the two men.
back at the start once again. Collar and elbow tie-up. Side headlock by Ian Rotten. Grinding the temples of Tommy Gilbert. Still to come, triangle match for the North American title as Tommy Gilbert starts to go to work on the knee of Ian Rotten. He's got him down on the mat and you look at the face of Ian Rotten, he's in pain. Reckless Youth will defend the North American title later tonight in a triangle match against two men he has never faced before. Newcomers to the NWA, Lance Diamond and the Cheetah Master. Oh. Ian now turning things around with Gilbert and a hammerlock as well as a uh, half Nelson. Two count. Crowd urging Tommy Gilbert on here. And now the match in the favor of Ian Rotten. Number one hook suplex takes him over. Taking one look at the locker room here tonight at Cherry Hill West High School. It's a virtual who's who in the wrestling business. We're from the NWA, World Wrestling Federation, USWA, IWA. Swells all over the independence on the East Coast, the ECWA based in Delaware. Wrestlers from Virginia, Maryland, all over the place here tonight to pay tribute to Eddie Gilbert as Tommy takes Ian Rotten over. Mike Keener on top of the situation. Cowboy Bill Watts was on hand earlier today at a banquet honoring Eddie Gilbert and other legends who have recently passed away in professional wrestling such as Dick Murdoch, as well former NWA champion several times over, handsome Harley Race. Almost a European uppercut there. Out forearm right to the jaw of Ian Rotten by Tommy Gilbert. And down goes Ian Rotten. Side headlock by Tommy Gilbert on Ian Rotten now. Ian backs him into the ropes and whips him in. Big clothesline and down. Back. Underhanded tactics now being used by Ian Rotten here. Big elbow to the forehead. Fist to the midsection and to the jaw of Ian Rotten and down he goes. Back and forth. And down once again is Ian Rotten. Ian now with the arm of Tommy Gilbert down on the mat. Mike the ref 
checking to see if Tommy Gilbert wants to give it up. He is close to the ropes there. He can reach the bottom rope. Ian will have to break the hold, but. The crowd urging Tommy Gilbert on here. Into the buckle and a big clothesline in the corner. Gilbert whipped in. And Ian comes charging. Knee drop. Hits the top turnbuckle. And once again, Ian Rotten injures the knee that Gilbert was working on earlier in the match. Kicking the knee once again. Tommy now, what's he going to go for a figure four here? Leg lock now on Ian Rotten. And Ian is in pain. As you can see on the face of Ian Rotten fighting off the pain on the knee. And he gives it up. Ian Rotten has submitted to Tommy Gilbert. Ian Rotten, legendary for the violent matches he's been involved in in the past. Suffered a lot of pain, spilled a lot of blood, but couldn't take the excruciating pain of the leg lock applied by Tommy Gilbert. Victorious here at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. Great way to remember his son, Hot Stuff. Eddie Gilbert. Fred the Elephant Boy out of the ring. Elephant Boy's got the mic. No, oh, please spare us. We have to hear him talk. some choice words for for the Oregon boy as well as these fans. Bundy now asking for the mic. Checking King Kong Bundy. 
rings the bell and uh, let's pray that the ring does hold up so that we can have the rest of the card tonight. Close to 800 pounds in the ring right now. Plus Fred Richards. Collar and elbow tie up. Bundy backs Dirty Dodd into the corner. Clean break? Yes. As Bundy talks to Fred the Elephant Boy, Montoya attacking from behind, backs him into the corner. Fists to the face of Bundy and into the midsection. That's not going to do much. Clothesline doesn't take down Bundy. Another try. No. Montoya now finally knocks down King Kong Bundy. He should go for a cover here instead of playing to the fans. Not following up on the move. This is Dirty Dumb Montoya now apparently choking him. Fred Richards getting in there. Leg drop across the neck of King Kong Bundy. And an elbow drop. But he's still not trying to cover Bundy. Finally he does. Only a two count. Right hand to the side of the head of Bundy. Shoulder block in the corner. And another one. Montoya now. Whips him in, reversal, into the corner, avalanche, and down goes Dirty Don Montoya. Big elbow drop by King Kong Bundy. One, two, three, four, five, and Bundy gets the five count and defeats Dirty Don Montoya here in Cherry Hill. Short work of one half of the Latin Lowriders, Dirty Don Montoya. title around her waist. Interesting situation. The reckless youth has defended the title against such superstars as Jason Knight, Mr. Puerto Rico, Tracy Smothers, the wild-eyed southern boy, in recent months. And Patricia has the microphone.
this year. I believe he won the coin toss, the Cheetah Master. He gets to sit out for the first two minutes as the Reckless Youth and Lance Diamond will wrestle. If there's no winner within the first two minutes, then all three wrestlers will wrestle at the very same time. But first, for two minutes, it will be Lance Diamond and the Reckless Youth. Diamond on your left, Youth in the black t-shirt. Collar and elbow tie-up, the reckless youth, headbutt to the arm of Lance Diamond. The action will be fast and furious in this matchup. I'll do my best to call the action. Reckless youth floats over. Rice Prophet intently watching on the ringside floor, as is Miss Patricia. Youth turns it into a hammerlock. Referee Mike Keener, the official assigned to this contest. Youth taken over, and Lance Diamond has the arm barred. Reckless Youth has been involved in several freeway dances within the past several weeks, taking on Dangerous Devin Storm and Ace Darling in Freehold, New Jersey for the New Jack City Wrestling Promotion last month. Now here tonight, tonight facing the Delaware boys for the NWA. Patricia well-traveled. She has worked for the USWA down in Memphis for several promotions across the East Coast. Now appearing for the MEWF in Baltimore once again. Hip toss by the Reckless Youth. Diamond kick right in the, kicks him right in the face. Hip toss over goes the Youth. He takes him down. Only a one count. Back and forth we go. Both men throwing a drop kick simultaneously. Very even matchup thus far. The two minutes is up. It now becomes a three-way match. All three men wrestling at the same time. The man left standing will be the North American heavyweight champion. You hit tosses diamond over. Patricia making her way around the ring. Royce Prophet has his back turned. Both men spill over the top rope onto the floor. Diamond hitting the table. Cheetah Master going to enter the match any second now. Both Diamond and Youth on the floor. There's Cheetah Master in the ring. He hits the ropes and dives, taking both men down. What a way to enter the contest. The Cheetah Master. A favorite of the live crowd here already, even though they haven't seen much of him thus far here in the NWA. Worrying just a bit too much about who he's going to throw his t-shirt out to is the Cheetah Master. He's not going to win the North American title if he doesn't focus on his two opponents. He's got the Reckless Youth back in the ring. Catches an elbow. Youth whipped into the corner. And Diamond now entering the ring. Big backdrop. Cheetah Master taking over. And Reckless Youth and Lance Diamond collide. 
belly-to-back suplex by the Cheetah Master on the Reckless Youth. Patricia urging the Reckless Youth on. Mike Keener makes the count. Only two. Now Youth. Reversal, whipped into the ropes. Big backdrop by the Cheetah Master on the Reckless Youth. And Diamond catches a left hand to the side of the head. Cheetah Master, the 90s version of Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Big avalanche in the corner. And down goes Lance Diamond. I believe that's a golf club that Royce Prophet has in his hand. Hopefully that won't come into play during this match. Three very talented athletes. We don't need to see any outside interference. Neither man can get the best of the reckless youth this early on. Neckbreaker. And now Lance Diamond has the advantage as Patricia attends to her man. Diamond gets a two count on the Cheetah Master, tries covering the Reckless Youth now. Back and forth. No wrestler with a clear advantage thus far in the triangle match. But being the champion, Reckless Youth goes in with the definite advantage. They need to beat him to win the title. Low blow by the Reckless Youth. Mike Keener warning him about those tactics. Two count by Diamond. And now the Reckless Youth with the advantage. Moonsault, he hits diamonds. Mike Keener, oh, only one and a half. Reckless Youth now with the Cheetah Master, whipped into the ropes. Flying kick right to the jaw. Cover. Diamond throws him off. Now he goes for the cover. That makes absolutely no sense. There is no reason that with all three men currently in the match that one would not want one of his opponents to pin the other man, making it one-on-one. -on -one. Then both men stand an equal chance of winning the title. If anything, they should be rooting each other on, hoping that one man gets eliminated early. Big clothesline in the corner. And a headbutt to the back of the neck of Lance Diamond by the Reckless Youth. Youth hailing from Babylon, New York, originally from New Jersey. Spent some time training at the Monster Factory as well as the Body Slammers Wrestling School in Lima, Ohio. Youth also a very well-traveled independent wrestler, appearing down in North Carolina, up in Connecticut, Detroit, Grand Rapids area in Michigan, as well for the NWA in New Jersey. Pennsylvania Championship Wrestling, one of the promotions that used him early on, where he made a name for himself. He's here in the NWA, and the Reckless Youth with a kick right to the face of Cheetah Master. Now Diamond comes and gets kicked in the midsection for his trouble. Whipped into the ropes reversal. Youth comes up with a big clothesline, taking down Lance Diamond. He needs to cover him, but he's not. There we go. Cheetah Master covers Lance Diamond.
Diamond thrown to the ringside floor. And Patricia slaps him on the outside. There's no call for that. Cheetah thrown to the floor as well. Royce Profit now getting into the action with his golf club. And Patricia fighting him off. Reckless Youth in the ring, both of his opponents on the floor. Somersault takes both men out on the floor and the fans are loving it here in Cherry Hill. Patricia urging Reckless Youth to get up and get back into the ring. Referee Mike Keener surveying the wreckage on the floor, putting the count on all three men. Diamond rolled back into the ring. As Youth climbs to the top rope, and Patricia chops the Cheetah Master down on the floor. You hear that echo throughout the building. Now she thinks she's Ric Flair. Diamond now, possibly going for a superplex here. And he hits it. Cheetah, meanwhile, climbing the ropes in the other corner. Headbutt hits both men, but all three are down. And ref Mike puts the count on them once again. As Patricia now coming after Royce Prophet, he wisely gets out of the way. Patricia urging on the reckless youth. He's the first to make it to his feet. But the Cheetah Master with a big power slam. And a two count. Lance Diamond breaking up the pinfall attempt. Apparently he doesn't fully understand the rules of this matchup. Cheetah Master now, working over Lance Diamond. Face first into the mat. As the reckless youth recuperating, Patricia tending to him on the ringside floor. Now Cheetah gonna be climbing the turnbuckles. High risk maneuver. Nobody home. Diamond rolls out of the way this whole time. The Reckless Youth has been able to regain his composure and now, full of energy, off the ropes, takes out the leg of the Cheetah Master. Now with him in a leg lock. Diamond now with the arm of the Cheetah Master. If Cheetah submits here, then it will be Lance Diamond and the Reckless Youth battling it out for the title. But they get frustrated. It would be wise for two of these guys to team up to take out their uh, opponent. Make it a one-on-one -on -one contest. Belly to belly by Cheetah Master. Diamond throws him off, goes for the cover himself. Ego's getting in the way here. When their goal should simply be to win the North American Heavyweight Championship of the NWA. Royce Prophet now encouraging Diamond on the floor as the Reckless Youth and Cheetah Master battle it out inside the squared circle. Cheetah now back on the outside, climbing the ropes. Patricia urges the Reckless Youth to move out of the way. Diamond climbing back into the ring. Big Superfly splash cover. Diamond throws him off once again, goes for the cover himself and only gets two and a half. Round of applause from the ringside fans. Back and forth. Nobody with a definite advantage thus far in the match. And once again, Cheetah Master and Lance Diamond shoving each other as the Reckless Youth recuperates. Drop kick to the back of Cheetah Master and he collides with Lance Diamond. Youth sets him up to the top rope. Moonsault gets it. One, two, and Diamond shoves him off. Oh, 
Cheetah Master now into the corner. Cole Nelson brings it back with a bridge, suplex. Can't get both of his shoulders down to the mat. Cheetah Master attempting a backslide on the youth. Turns around and face first into the mat. Modified DDT there by the reckless youth. And a three count on the Cheetah Master. It is now one on one between Lance Diamond and the current champion, the Reckless Youth. This is the first time that the Reckless Youth has faced either of these two men. He collides with the Cheetah Master, Diamond now, with a bridge. Two and a half, almost three. Patricia worried for her man, the Reckless Youth. Diamond and Cheetah had wrestled each other previously in Delaware, but first time Reckless Youth has faced these two men. Another suplex by Lance Diamond, and two and a half once again. Reckless Youth digging down deep to get his shoulder up. Mike Keener doing an excellent job of officiating this match. Very difficult to watch everything going around, going on around ringside during this matchup. Diamond now placing the reckless youth on the top rope in the corner. Punch to the chest. But the youth knocks Diamond off the top rope, comes off the top rope himself. And another modified DDT on Diamond. And now Youth to the top. Fog Splash hits it. Two count. Royce Prophet encouraging Lance Diamond on the floor. The Youth now on the back thrown down by Lance Diamond. Diamond with both the youth's shoulders on on the mat. And the three count. A three count by Lance Diamond out of nowhere. And we have a new NWA North American champion in Lance Diamond. Talk about an upset. Reckless Youth holding on to the title since September. And out of nowhere, Lance Diamond pins both of his shoulders to the mat for a three count. And <laughs> not only Lance Diamond, but more importantly, Royce Profit with NWA Gold. What is this world coming to? There's a good look at your new champion, Lance Diamond in his first match for the NWA wins the championship bout. NWA, Harley Lewis immediately going to the attack, throws Janetti to the floor, and this is where uh, Harley and partner Derek Domino specialize in brutalizing their opponents. Harley now with a chair to the back of Marty Janetti. And Janetti hurled through several rows of the ringside chairs. The fans scurry out of the way. 
Lewis now trying for a suplex. Janetti blocking, and he suplexes Harley Lewis on the floor. And no, there are no mats down there on the ringside floor here in Cherry Hill at the West High School Gymnasium. Janetti now rolling Lewis back into the ring. Got him backed into the corner. And a monkey flip out of the corner. Marty Janetti with the advantage here. Angel scurrying around the ring as Janetti misses in the corner. Up on the ring apron is Angel. And she's got Marty Janetti. Oh, misdirection there. Janetti gets the quick pinfall victory over Harley Lewis out of nowhere. Miscommunication on the part of Angel and Harley Lewis. Harley accidentally knocking her off the ring apron and Janetti gets the victory. And Angel is not happy with her man. Whipping him. Photographer's getting a good shot of this. to defend the title tonight against former champion Dory Funk Jr. Severn warming up as he does before each title defense. Working up a sweat before he even gets into the ring. defeating Chris Candido for the World Championship in Erlinger, Kentucky on February 24th, 1995. Has held the title ever since. Defending it all over the world, over in Japan, Canada, here in the United States. Winning the title back in 1969. Wouldn't it be something if he regains it here tonight? April 12th, 1997. That would set some sort of record. I know Lou Fez has wrestled in 
in uh, several decades. He even wrestled Masa Chono in Japan so that he uh, can be a competitor in the ring during the 1990s, but I don't think there's ever been a world champion with separate title reigns as far apart as Dory Funk Jr. would be if he wins the title here tonight from Dan Severn. Referee Fred Richards displaying the world title. Severn and Funk faced one another at Imaginations in Yardville, New Jersey back on the 22nd of February, wrestling each other to a 30 minute time limit draw. Very good pure wrestling match. Covered heavily by the Japanese press. Severn backing Funk into the corner, clean break. We're gonna see a lot of those during this contest. Two great sportsmen, Dory Funk Jr. and Dan Severn. They lock up once again. And Funk backed into the corner. Fireman's carry takeover. Last year at the Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl over at the National Guard Armory here in Cherry Hill, Severn defended the title against simply sensational Al Snow in the main event as well. Dory took on Tommy Gilbert, wrestling him to a 20-minute time limit draw. Severn has competed for the IWA in Japan, as well as New Japan Pro Wrestling. Faced Yoshiari, Yoshiaki Fujiwara in a televised matchup several months ago. And now Severn with Dory on his shoulders. What's he gonna do with him? Places Funk on the top rope. Has him more backed into the corner than sitting on the top rope. Dory climbs back down. Severn star of the ultimate fighting world. In Yardville, got on the microphone before the match began and told the fans that if he wanted to, he could take Dory out in just a few seconds with a submission hold, but he respects Dory Funk Jr. and wanted to take him to the limit in a wrestling match. And that he did, but was not able to score a pinfall victory over Dory Funk Jr. Former NWA world champion several times over, handsome Harley race in attendance here tonight, looking on. He knows Dory Funk Jr. very well. Tonight, his first time watching Dan Severn wrestle professionally. He has seen some of his UFC work. And Severn with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex on Funk takes him over. not really following up, waits for Dory to get to his feet. Once again, both men taking it very slow here. And Severn down, goes for the leg of Dory Funk. Severn once again has Junior up on his shoulders. And plants him in the mat while keeping hold of the arm.
Chris Candido winning the NWA title. Again here in the historic city of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Back on November 19th, 1994. Defeated Al Snow, Tracy Smothers, and the Dirty White Boy in his matches in the tournament. Also featured in the tournament were Hot Stuff, Eddie Gilbert, Johnny Gunn, Osamu Nishimura, Lightning, Lou Perez, Dangerous, Devin Storm, Jerry the King Lawler, One of the photographers there at ringside, can't really see him right now, he's on your left. Got sort of a pink t-shirt on, baseball cap and sunglasses. That's Joe Marshall, the designer of uh, the current NWA world title belt. And the fans encouraging both men on here. Very scientific hold for hold wrestling encounter thus far between Severn and Funk. Funk gets out of the headlock, rolls up Severn, two and a half. Almost a fluke pinfall victory there for Dory Funk Jr., much like Lance Diamond got over the reckless youth earlier tonight. Severn with a big body slam on Funk. But Dory gets his shoulder up. Two and a half. And an elbow drop right to the neck. But Dory kicks out once again. He's not going to put him away that easily. George Napolitano. Running around ringside taking photos for his chain of magazines. Also in attendance, Tim Walker, Blackjack Brown, solo photographers from Japan. Donnie Liable, shooting ringside. One count by Funk. Trying to pin both of Severn's shoulders to the mat. I don't think Dory's going to overpower Dan Severn here. Severn with his foot on the ropes, and Dory's going to have to break the hold. Referee Fred Richards getting in there. Severn once again with Dory on his shoulders this time. That's got to take a lot out of the back of Dory. And now Severn with a leg lock. Richards asking Dory if he wants to give it up. Severn turning it into a half trap. the fans once again encouraging both men on. Say so this crowd is about 50-50. They appreciate the wrestling ability of both Dory Funk Jr. and the Beast. Still to come, Gold Dust will face Psycho Derek Domino, the other half of the Misfits in our main event. As well, Flash Funk from the WWF squares off against Ace Darling. And the Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, with Jim Cornette, will take on 
dangerous Doug Gilbert. Plus, we have a 20-man over-the-top rope battle royal. Seven now with a side headlock on Dory once again. Dory backs him into the corner. No, not a clean break that time is Dory. European uppercut. And he's being worn by Fred Richards in the corner. And Dory now seems to be a little ticked. Throws Severn to the floor, very uncharacteristic of Dory Funk Jr. He's not gonna defeat Dan if they're on the ringside floor. He's gotta do it in the ring. European uppercut once again on the floor. Dory climbs back into the ring as Severn regroups at ringside. Back up on the ring apron and down again goes Dan Severn. Severn picking up Funk once again and again. The back driven into the mat. And now Severn going for a Boston Crab. Gets him over, but Dory's too close to the ropes. He's got the bottom rope, and Severn's going to have to break the hold. Severn takes him down, holding onto the arm once again. Goes for a cover this time, only a two count. He's got a reverse chin lock on him. What he needs to do is get his knee into the back of Dory here. Ah, he leans back on him. Hands locked behind the head of Dory Funk Jr. Funk now on top of Severn. Trying to squirm out of the situation. And they both roll over to the ropes. And once again, they break the hole. Funk rolls out onto the floor. Tempers appear to be flaring a little bit more here in Cherry Hill than they did at Imaginations back in February. As is evidenced by ramming Severn's forehead right into the timekeeper's table there. Severn now back up on the ring apron and Funk's gonna try to suplex him back into the ring, and he does. Do a round of applause from the fans. Funk now in control of the matchup. Has Severn down on the mat. Cowboy Bill Watts, former Mid-South bigwig and former executive vice president in charge of wrestling operations for World Championship Wrestling. Looking on as well in the locker room. Oh, 
Severn takes Funk over and turns the tide of the matchup once again. Funk now bridging up. Slap on the chest of Dory takes him back down. Dory powers up once again. Severn holds on. But Dory takes him over and Severn is in the ropes. Dory rolls to the floor again. Grabs Severn's leg and pulls him to the floor as well. Dory not being very wise. He can't win the belt taking the match out into the crowd onto the floor. Severn now picking up Funk. Slams him down on the table. And rolls him back into the ring. Big clothesline and down goes Dory. Severn covers him. Only a two count. Leg drop right across the throat. And a two once again. Dory Funk in great physical condition. And a European uppercut once again catches Severn. And again, legendary blows administered by Funk. He's too close to the ropes if he's going to take him over with that suplex. And the power of Dan Severn takes Dory over with a bridge. Only a two. Both men physically drained by this point. Severn covers him once again, only a two count. Fred Richards on top of the action. Now Severn throwing Funk out on top of the table. Both men now back in the ring. Big clothesline, doesn't take Dory over the top rope. Severn's got him up on the top rope. Funk puts Severn through a table at ringside. Both men go crashing through the table onto the floor as Fred Richards puts the count on both men. Both Dan Severn and Dory Funk Jr. drained of energy have been going at it for quite a while now. Dory trying to clamp onto the apron. Can't quite make it. Richards continues the count and says to ring the bell. Looks like both men have been counted out of the ring. We have a double count out here. Double count out. It's a draw between Dan the Beast Severn and Dory Funk Jr. Severn walks away from the Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl, still holding on to the NWA World Championship belt. The crowd chanting for five more minutes as Fred Richards raises both, both, hand, both of their arms. Nice handshake between Funk and Severn. Good show of sportsmanship. And Severn remains your World Heavyweight Champion.
Promoter Dennis Coraluzzo introducing the participants in our battle royal here tonight. Many of which competed earlier in the evening tonight. And uh, some additional independent wrestling superstars, stars of the NWA. I see HW Star in there. The goon Rocco Dorsey, Big Slam Vader, Jimmy Cicero, the party animal, Patch, the icon, Inferno Kid, Steve Carino, Ralph Soto, Mr. Puerto Rico, Harley Lewis, Dirty Don Montoya, as well Twiggy Ramirez and Adrian Hall, the downward spiral, and Billy Highlight Reel also scheduled to be in this contest. Don't see him at ringside just yet. Both Mike Keener and Fred Richards on the ringside floor are officiating. Must be thrown over the top rope and have both feet hit the floor to be eliminated from the matchup. The Black Scorpion in there as well. Ah, that's Rick Ratchet. I don't care what anybody says. Tommy Coraluzzo claiming during intermission that it wasn't Rick Ratchet, but we all saw his face. Mr. Puerto Rico has been eliminated from the match. And the party animal just spilled over the top rope onto the floor. Ralph Soto out as well. Rocco Dorsey trying to charge with a clothesline, flies over the top rope, can he hold on? And Ray Odyssey kicks him onto the floor and Rocco Dorsey is eliminated from the match as well. There's Billy Real climbing to the top rope. On your right, he's at the top rope, moonsault onto Rocco Dorsey on the floor. Don't see very many moonsaults in Battle Royals. Big slam Vader thrown out by the icon. Billy Real now to the top rope once again. He hasn't entered the match yet. Now both feet placed in the ring. He is now officially in the matchup. So that moonsault did not eliminate him. He did that before coming into the ring. Jimmy Cicero holding Billy Real as Don Montoya goes to work on him. Ray Odyssey working over Patch in the corner. Cicero eliminated by Don Montoya. And onto the floor goes the Black Scorpion, courtesy of Patch. It's now, looks like it's Patch, the icon, Dirty Don Montoya, and Surfer Ray Odyssey, the final four men in our battle royal. And Ray Odyssey over the top rope, not a, that there he hits the floor. Don Montoya on your left, the icon with the armbands and Patch with, of course, the eye patch. Now Montoya and Patch going to work on the icon in the ring, choking him on the middle rope. One of these three men will win the 20 man over the top rope battle royal. They're going to eliminate icon, but. Double clothesline over goes Patch and, and he gets Don Montoya over the top rope as well and the winner of the Battle Royal is the Icon.
Jimmy Cornette leads the Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, to the ring. And also closely following behind Jim Cornette is Don Marie. Landell scheduled to take on dangerous Doug Gilbert here tonight. Landell appearing with the NWA faced Ace Darling in Yardville at Imagination last month. tonight as Jim Cornette and Buddy Landell demanded that the match only take place if it is a street fight. So Landell dressed in street clothes and as well the native of Lexington, Tennessee, Doug Gilbert makes his way to the ring dressed in street clothes as well and he hits the ring and before the bell action is underway. Landell whipped into the corner and a big hip toss by Doug Gilbert. And Landell retreats to the ringside floor. Doug closely follows. Right hand. And another. Grabs Landell right into the ring post. Referee Mike Keener assigned to this matchup. face first into the ringside table. We've already had that table broken once by Funk and Severn here tonight. And now Doug on top of the table, low blow. And a right hand and Doug Gilbert goes crashing down through the table. Looks like we're gonna have to have a third table brought out to ringside for our ring announcer and timekeeper. And Landell looks to be busted open. And he's got a chair in hand as Doug Gilbert Heads toward the bleachers here at West High School. Chair right to the forehead of Doug Gilbert as well as they make their way through the crowd. Landell with Gilbert. On top of yet another table is Doug Gilbert. Jim Cornette. Getting a good look at things on the ring, the ring apron. And Gilbert laid out on top of the table once again. Mike Keener following these wrestlers around the building. And Doug Gilbert rammed face first into the, the divider here at the West High School Gymnasium. Referee wants them to take it back into the ring, but this is a street fight. Anything goes, no count out and no disqualification. 
and the fans in this region of the country love this style of matchup. As they're up in the bleachers now and the fans are scurrying as Buddy Landell and dangerous Doug Gilbert go toe to toe, both of them busted open by this point. Back and forth with right hands. Gilbert now through the chairs. Both men brawling all over the building here. A bloody Landau follows Doug Gilbert. And Landell, miscalculation there, gets knocked down by Gilbert. Dawn Marie following as well, watching out for her man, Buddy Landell, and Gilbert now with a chair. Right to the throat of the Nature Boy. Referee asking them to take it into the ring once again. Gilbert with Landell by the hair, kick to the midsection. And Landell with the advantage again. Landell with Mike Keener by the shirt. I know this is anything goes, but can't put your hands on an NWA official. And now Landell rams Gilbert into the ring post. Landell with Cornette's tennis racket to the back and another shot. Throws the tennis racket back into the ring with Cornette. All over the building. Landell now with Gilbert by the hair. Gilbert blocks and rams Landell face first into the merchandise table. And again. Cornette and Mike Keener going at it in the ring. Doug Gilbert with Landell, and they go crashing through a table in the back of the arena. And the crowd is loving it here in Cherry Hill as Landell with Doug Gilbert. Takes it off by some, some off merchandise tables, big elbow drop, and another table collapses. Both men a bloody mess. Landell with the upper hand. Gilbert doesn't know where he is, finds him. Slowly making their way back to the ring. as fans getting up close and personal views of the action as they brawl all over the building. Gilbert whipped into the corner, big boot to the face of Buddy Landell and down he goes. Gilbert goes for the cover. One and a half on Landell. Super kick and Landell is out on his feet. Gilbert covers him once again. Two and a half, he barely gets his shoulder up. And Jim Cornette on the ring apron. Landell rolls up Gilbert. Kicked off, Gilbert, Landell and Cornette collide. Roll up, and Doug Gilbert scores the pinfall victory over the Nature Boy, Buddy Landell. the tennis racket going to work on Doug Gilbert on the floor calling Buddy Landell out. Gilbert is the winner of this street fight but Cornette and Landell are not done with dangerous Doug. Cornette with the tennis racket to the forehead of Doug Gilbert hands the racket to Landell. Cornette now holding Doug Gilbert by the arms. Shots to the midsection with that tennis racket and to the forehead. Cornette puts the boots to Doug Gilbert and gives him his racket back. 
A victory for Doug Gilbert, but Cornette and Landau get the better of him after the matchup. And the fans don't look to be too happy with the actions of Jim Cornette and Buddy Landau as they retreat back to the locker room along with Don Marie. Understand that the Funk Gets are not in attendance here tonight. Many fans disappointed at that fact. And I don't believe Marlena's in the building either, uh, as Goldust will be facing Derek Domino in our next matchup. But nevertheless, it's a great treat to have Flash Funk here in the NWA. Funk and Ace Darling. Once again, the crowd is probably split about. Ace Darling, very popular wrestler, hailing from the Jersey Shore, and Flash Funk will test his skill. This matchup. Fred Richards will be your referee. It's been a great card so far tonight. Severn and Funk wrestling it to a double count out. We have a new North American heavyweight champion in Lance Diamond. During intermission, Dennis Corluzzo did make the announcement that Ace Darling is now, for some reason, the number one contender for the North American Championship. That did not sit well with the reckless youth who feels he deserves the first shot at Diamond. He deserves a rematch but Coraluzzo declaring Ace Darling the new number one contender. We also have new United States Tag Team Champions in the Beach Bullies, Inferno Kid and Surfer Ray Odyssey. Fantastic action to cap off a great weekend for the NWA with our tribute banquet earlier this afternoon and wrestling fan convention at the Holiday Inn here in Cherry Hill. Tomorrow morning will be a Q&A session with the stars, which will also be available here on home video. Ace Darling now with the arm of Flash Funk spins around lots of fancy footwork compared by Flash Funk. Takes Ace Darling over and holds onto the arm 
But Ace looks to be in the ropes. Hip up, back down, and again, back and forth they go. Ace rolls him up. Oh, not even a one count there. Arm drag. section of Ace Darling by Flash Funk. Snaps him over, but Ace lands on his feet. Very even matchup here. Darling slides through the legs, and a leapfrog over. But Flash catches him in the midsection. Whip into the corner. Monkey flip by Flash Funk. Down across the back, upper back of Ace Darling, and now kick right to the chest of Ace Darling to the applause of the ringside fans, and it looks like Flash Funk slide with a kick right to the jaw of Ace Darling, and both men now on the ringside floor. Open hand slaps to the chest, back and forth they go. Flash Funk wisely takes it back into the ring. And they go at it once again. Roundhouse kick by Flash Funk, catches him in the jaw. Funk rammed into the top turnbuckle. Ace Darling now on the top rope. High cross. And Funk is knocked down to the floor. Spinning flip over the top rope. Takes out Flash Funk. Fantastic maneuver by Ace Darling, and the fans are loving it. Elbow drop and a cover, but only two as Flash Funk gets the elbow up. If you live in the state of New Jersey, keep your eye out for the NWA, especially at our shows in Yardville, New Jersey at Imaginations, basically the NWA's home ground. Support your local wrestling no matter where you are. And Funk drops Ace Darling down onto the mat. Pulls him into the center of the ring. Referee Fred Richards asking Ace Darling if he wants to give it up. Still to come, Goldust takes on Psycho Derek Domino in our main event. Should be a wild encounter to say the least. Ace Darling trying to reach the bottom rope. Can't quite make it. Flash Funk, let's go the hold anyway. Looks like he's going for a power bomb, and he gets it. To the cheers of the fans, Flash Funk. Farming the ropes, middle turnbuckle. On the inside, spinning leg drop right across the chest of Ace Darling, but 
Doesn't go for the three count. Flash Funk signaling. He's gonna try to finish off Ace Darling, but he reverses it. Flash Funk misses several swings, and Ace takes him over with a suplex and a bridge. Can't quite keep Flash Funk's shoulders pinned down to the mat. Ace Darling getting his second win. Frankensteiner takes him over the cover. Only two. And a kick to the jaw. Mandel making his way to ringside. He's got a chair in his hand. We have a great athletic contest going on in the ring. Hopefully Buddy Landell won't come into play. Flash Flunk to the top rope. Big moonsault. He hits it. Two count. Flash Funk sees Landell. I have no idea what Buddy Landell is doing at ringside. He's climbing up on the ring apron now as Ace Darling and Flash Funk go at it. Back and forth we go, and Landell hits Ace Darling in the back of the head with that chair. Flash Funk doesn't know what to think as Landell hops off the ring apron. What provocation does Buddy Landell have to interfere in this matchup? Flunk goes for the cover. Doesn't have both of his shoulders down on the mat, but holds him down. For the three count, Flash Funk is your winner over Race Darling here, but he doesn't look to be too happy that it was a tainted victory considering the outside interference of Buddy Landell. And he is not happy taking it to Buddy Landell on the floor. Right hand throws Landell into the ring. And Ace Darling gives Landell some punishment as well. Double team. Both men clothesline Landell. Neither Ace Darling nor Flash Funk happy with the situation. Double super kick to the chest of Buddy Landell and he is out. I'm sure both Flash Funk and Ace Darling would have liked to see who was the better man in a wrestling contest, but Buddy Landell felt the need to get involved in the matchup and introduce that chair to Ace Darling's head. Your winner is Flash Funk. champion Goldust makes his way to the ring.
Sans Marlena. Spectacular entrance here for the very mysterious Gold Dust. And uh, I think that speaks for itself. Referee Mike Keener assigned to this contest. Trying to keep both men apart before the bell. Goldust removes the wig. Some words for Goldust. I don't quite know if Goldust knows what he's going up against here tonight. Derek Domino. One of the toughest men in the NWA. He's had violent matches with Tommy Cairo, Abuda Singh, Ian Rotten, Madman Pondo. Angel now with some words for Goldust. And he throws the wig right in her face and Domino doesn't like that. Going right to work on Goldust. Angel makes her way out to the ringside floor as Domino with a big clothesline floors Goldust who rolls out to the ringside floor. Rammed face first into the mat and now Angel taunting Goldust. Paddle in hand. And much like partner Harley Lewis, Derek Domino excels when he's out on the ringside floor. He excels in a brawl rather than a wrestling contest. And that's what we're going to see here tonight as he takes on Goldust. Both men now back out on the ringside floor. Domino puts the boots to Goldust as Angel watches on. And they're going back toward the bleachers now. Goldust rammed face first into the table, knocks it over, and a bunch of merchandise as well goes crashing to the floor. Domino now with a chair across the neck of Goldust. Mike Keener follows the wrestlers to the back of the building here. Promoter Dennis Corluzzo watching on as well. The fans once again getting a great view of the action here as the wrestlers brawl through the crowd. Making their way back to the ring now. Goldust rolled back in. And Domino immediately goes for a cover. Mike Keener not in position. Only a two count. The Misfits will no doubt be challenging for the Beach Bum, the Beach Bullies, uh, United States Tag Team title in the near future. Two of the toughest men in the National Wrestling Alliance are Derek Domino and Harley Lewis. Domino now using leverage from the bottom rope. Referee Mike Keener sees it and makes him break the hold. Big foot down across the neck, the throat of Goldust. Capacity crowd on hand here at Cherry Hill West High School. We well, thank you for checking out what the NWA has to offer here on home video. Been an amazing weekend. 
Domino keeps the hold on Goldust, squirming on the mat. Mike Keener right in. Checking the arm. That's two. But Golda still has some fight left in him. The fans urging Goldust on to break out of this hole. Domino once again with his feet on the bottom rope being warned by the referee. Shoves referee Mike Keener and he gets shoved back for his trouble. You can't put your hands on an NWA official, especially Mike Keener. As Domino and the referee are arguing, Goldust catching his breath. And now choked out on the top rope is Goldust. Whip into the ropes. Goldust missed that punch, but connected with that one right to the jaw of Derek Domino. And a big clothesline takes the big man down. And again, Angel does not look too happy on the ringside floor. Goldust takes Domino now into the crowd once again, back toward the bleachers. Into the table goes Derek Domino, and Goldust now with a garbage can dumped over the head of psycho Derek Domino. And now, right hands to the face. Mike Keener wants him to take it back into the ring, but it doesn't look like he's going to. Domino now rammed right into the concrete wall. Much like Buddy Landell and Doug Gilbert earlier in the evening, Goldust and Derek Domino going all over the building with the action here in our main event. Domino now rolled back into the ring by Goldust. But Angel on the ringside floor hops up on the back of Goldust. As much as she shouldn't mess with him, he also shouldn't mess with Angel as Domino now holding Goldust. Angel swings a chair, Goldust moves and she connects with Domino, and now Goldust with the ch I think she left her uh, paddle there in the corner and Goldust has it. <laughs> um, okay. The chair to the forehead of Derek Domino. And again, Domino collapses to the ringside floor. The chair thrown under the bottom rope into the ring. As is Derek Domino. Down across the throat goes that steel chair. And now Goldust picks Domino up by the hair. Chair in hand, whip into the ropes. Oh, right to the face of Derek Domino, and Angel is livid. Goldust drops the chair. What's he gonna follow this up with? Angel doesn't know what to do on the floor. DDT on the chair, that should do it. The cover. One, two, three, and Goldust gets the pinfall victory with the DDT over Psycho Derek Domino here in the main event at the second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. Very wild encounter going all over the building between Domino and Goldust. A fitting end to a fantastic wrestling event here in Cherry Hill, New Jersey.
Goldust still with the chair in his hand as Domino and Angel make their way back to the locker room. Once again, your winner is Goldust. For ring announcer Chad Gerber, this is Dave Prezak. Thank you for being with us here on NWA Home Video and look out for more from the National Wrestling Alliance in the future. So long, everybody. What a spectacular evening here in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Doug Gilbert and Buddy Landell brawling all over the high school gymnasium here at Cherry Hill West High School. Goldust defeating Derek Domino. Dory Funk Jr. and Dan Severn giving it their all to a double countout. It's been a great second annual Eddie Gilbert Memorial Brawl. We thank you for joining us and stay tuned for more from the National Wrestling Alliance.